Hi, this is Kathy Eplin, the Assistant Director of Nursing Education at KCKCC. I'm also the SIM coordinator. And several of my SIM students have commented on the clinical judgment model. They find it confusing and report that every instructor seems to give them different information about it. So I am trying to um, give you an example that we can all kind of follow. So hopefully you have seen the KCKCC ADN Clinical Judgment Teaching Tool. Our director, Ms. Anderson, has created this from the NCSBN Clinical Judgment Me Measurement Model. And she did this a couple of years ago, giving us a simplified version of what are the steps to clinical judgment. So first, always, always, the nurse has to assess. We rarely say always or never, but this is a, an actual um, truism. The nurse has to always assess, not just one thing, but as much as we can. So first we talk about what assessments were done to find the cues, and we'll talk about what cues are in just a second. But what assessments were done and why? And then, just as importantly, what assessments were not done and why? And is it okay we didn't do those assessments? And that leads us to the first big step of the clinical judgment model, which is what relevant cues were present. So first, what are cues? Cues are the data we find in our assessment, in our look around the room, um, our, our touching and, and listening to the patient, our looking through their labs. Basically, what do you notice? Anything you notice that is out of the ordinary, our observations, our assessment, their health history, report we got from the previous shift, medical records, labs, diagnostic tests, environment in the room or the office where we're seeing the, the patient. Any deviation from normal is a cue we need to look at. So a helpful hint here, being cold with chills in a 76 degree hospital room is a relevant cue. However, being cold with chills standing in the snow is not a relevant cue. It's expected, it's normal. So any deviation from the norm is a relevant cue we need to look at. And now we've taken a, a, the first big chunk of the clinical judgment model. From there, we need to analyze the cues to do the nursing process of analysis. And when we do that, that allows us to form the hypothesis. So we create one or more hypotheses. And what is a hypothesis? That word tends to throw people. Hypothesis is just what problem is going on with the patient. And as we look at all of our cues, we need to put them together and put them with specifically the situation going on with our client and our client's history. But we need to cluster them together and try to come up with what problem or problems may be going on with the patient. And next, which cues that we listed in the previous question, number three, actually align with each problem. We may have a cue that aligns with every hypothesis we wrote down. We may have a cue that only aligns with one of those hypotheses, but we need to see where our cues actually align. And then are there any cues that indicate that there is a hypothesis or problem that is not the problem we thought it was? Or maybe it's what we thought and something else. It's not the only problem going on with the client. So for example, let's say we have a client we think has pneumonia because they have fever, that fits, they have congestion, that fits, they have some new crackles and wheezing, it's barely there, but that fits. But one cue that contraindicates pneumonia is that they have a clear chest x-ray. A chest x-ray should be a, a very firm indicator of pneumonia, so hmm, either it's we caught it really early or that's not what's going on, but I need to look at my cues and see if they fit. And now that's a third of our way through the clinical judgment model. From now, we're still doing analysis and we need to prioritize the hypothesis. So which is the most likely problem that's going on with my patient based on all the cues that I saw? If there is more than one possibility, then 
what is the most likely and what is the most important. Important being the most critical, the thing that could cause the most uh, potential harm if we don't get it corrected. Or what is the most urgent? Urgent is what something that's got to be taken care of immediately. Um, it may not be the most important thing, but it's got to be done now, but it's a timing thing. So the beauty of prioritizing, this goes with delegation. RNs need to delegate um, in sim and clinical everywhere you go. Um, if there's someone that you can pull in as part of your team, you need to delegate. So if I have prioritized, then I can deal with the important issue, but I can delegate that urgent thing that needs to be taken care of right now. They they just have a, a new cut and they're bleeding and they, that needs to be stopped and fixed, but I really need to deal with the overall important issue. So I can delegate to another healthcare professional the urgent that needs to be taken care of while I deal with the important. And now we're halfway through the clinical judgment model. So next is the planning nursing process to generate solutions. Now that I've kind of figured out what's going on and know my priorities of what's important, now I need to figure out what interventions for each hypothesis that I believe is going on with my patient. I need to look at what are the outcomes uh, expected for these problems in this patient. And I need to set goals, and hopefully you've all heard about SMART goals, where you set very specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time bound or time specific goals that we can actually look at and determine is our client reaching the outcomes that we want them to. And besides looking at the outcomes for the hypotheses that we've already covered and looking at those in priority um, order, we also need to see is there something that needs to be done, some intervention that needs to take place to prevent harm in my patient. Um, so these generating solutions, these interventions are everything from things that we can do as nurses without any doctor order. Nobody needs to tell us we can raise the head of the bed if they're having issues breathing. Um, or it can also include I need to call the doctor and ask for a recommendation of a, a pain med order because nothing is working to relieve pain for my patient, but I don't have an order for any medication. So. Anything and everything the nurse can do with or without doctor's orders is an intervention. It is a solution to help our patient. And don't forget to look at any interventions needed to prevent harm, like implementing a fall bundle, or maybe it's as simple as I need to print the discharge paperwork in a larger font so the patient can read it and then have a better success at being healthy and going home and not coming right back. So now we're two thirds of the way there and we're going to actually implement those actions, the nursing process. We're gonna take action, focusing on the highest priorities um, of what needs to be done for the patient and what the biggest um, areas of harm, if we don't do something, we need to determine what we're gonna do and what we're gonna do first and second and so forth. We're actually doing at this point. So are any of the interventions that we listed contraindicated? Contraindicated meaning we should not do them. They would cause more harm than good. And if so, why are they contraindicated? Is it a forever contraindicated? For example, the bacteria the client tests positive for is most susceptible to penicillin, but the client is allergic to penicillin, has a severe reaction, that is a forever not okay if there's any other option. That is always going to be contraindicated. Sometimes things are contraindicated for the moment because our patient can't take the NPO meds um, because they're NPO for a procedure or something going on that is just temporary. At some point, it won't be contraindicated to take pills. Um, if ordered, but right now they can't do it, so it's a temporary thing. But I need to look at, can I do safely the interventions that I want to do? And now it's almost over. I've thought through it. I have figured out my actions, but I have got to do an evaluation. That's the nursing process to evaluate the outcomes. Compare what was expected to what's actually happening. 
were the outcomes actually met and hopefully they're getting better so we look at what signs did indicate improvement in the client or if it's something I did at the end of shift or in sim where I have such a limited time maybe I didn't see the improvement but I need to think through what signs would indicate improvement in the client how do I measure did they get better we also need to look at what signs did indicate decline or would indicate decline if I were able to spend longer with the patient. What didn't work and, and why? And what further interventions would need to be done if the patient's declining or just simply isn't getting better as expected? So with everything we do, we need to look at what needs to be changed or modified and why. And maybe we don't need to change anything because it worked but often every intervention we do is not going to work so something worked something didn't it's a constant rethinking reassessing re um, coming up with new hypotheses why didn't that work what would work better and then implement that and evaluate again it is a constant ever process going cycle that we go through and that is the KCKCC ADN Clinical Judgment Tool. Hopefully that helps make sense. And I would just like to give credit to Ms. Susan Anderson, our director, is the one who put together the KCKCC Clinical Judgment Model. And Donna Ignatavichis, we have worked with um, for the last few years building our new curriculum, and you should all have her um, book, Developing Clinical Judgment for Professional Nursing. And our own Dr. Phyllis Lading gave me some information from her notes or her lectures in Nurse 105, and I would like to thank them all.